All right, gang, we've wrapped up a, a long day of filming here, me and Tyler Gray, and we decided to take a minute to just kind of talk a little bit about our experiences in the military with small arms and the fact that not everybody in special operations is a gun guy. It's kind of another tool in the toolbox. Tyler, what do you think? There's so many different skill sets that you have to know and you have to be extremely good at, and you only have enough time to be an absolute fanatic about one of them. Some people are super into to skydiving or scuba diving or climbing. Off-road driving, that's another thing you saw some guys are really passionate about. It's a minority of people in the special operations community that are truly serious gun guys. I, I personally, how I got into uh, guns, and, and I think you'll agree you were the same, is I didn't get into them. I think it's just something you're kind of born with. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, at the youngest age, my grandfather was a uh, police officer for 35 years. And I remember being maybe four years old, going to the basement and him showing me like zip guns that he'd gotten from criminals. And I was just fascinated from as long as I can yeah. remember. Inevitably, when I talk to guys who are gun guys, they remember back to the first time they saw a small arm or, or a firearm or whatever, and it got him right then. Yeah. They were hooked. And I was certainly that way. My dad gave me a single shot bolt action 22. Yeah. And dude, yeah. I was hooked. That, that was my that same was first. Game over. You can trace where I'm at today back to that bolt action 22. Yep. And I was I was hooked from then on. Same here. Was your bolt action the one where you had to do the bolt and then pull yes, back? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Same, single I was shot. The same yeah. gun. And my grandfather wouldn't let me, so he he'd give me one bullet, and then I had to walk up to the line, put the one bullet in fire it and then i'd have to walk back you know to him to grab another bullet he only gave me one at a time that's but cool that's the first time i ever shot a live round and i remember that day you know like it was yesterday probably get this question on a regular basis i do on social media favorite gun what's your favorite gun favorite gun um as a kid the gun when i was like uh you know around 10 years old that i just thought was the coolest gun of all time mm -hmm. and then i shot it years later and it, it lived up to the oh, really? height that I built, which that... was MP5 SD3. Oh. I thought that was the coolest gun ever. And then I remember being you know, at the unit shooting it and then being like, it is as cool as I expected That's it to cool. be. That's cool. I mean, it feels like a BB gun and you're spitting out nine mil rounds, no recoil. And I was just like, this is, this is awesome. And I just, I loved it. So that's, that's cool. mine. Yeah. What's yours? I would have to say Storm Gavir. Proud to say the number one Sturmgewehr video is one that me and my crew did on the Sturmgewehr. The, the thing that I'm the most passionate about that I really have the most interest in is assault rifles. And the assault rifle as we know it today really started with the Sturmgewehr. Yeah. Granted, the Fedorov technically, if you get down to brass tacks, is the predecessor. But the reality of it is when you look at modern assault rifles, the gun that we trace them all back to is the Sturmgewehr. And if you look at what that gun did by the by the end of World War II, it made it made a lot of weapons obsolete because the Germans completely leapfrogged it with yeah. the Sturmgewehr. Yeah. So that would have to be my favorite. If, you, if there's a gun you'd love to shoot, firearm you'd love to shoot, you have anything on the that, top that of I the haven't list? shot? Ah um, yeah. oh man, that's a tough one. Um, FG, I've never shot an FG42. Oh, no, that puts you. There's a lot of people that. Have. Yeah, 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 exactly. I don't, I, I don't feel bad in saying that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, FG42. Um, it's such a rare gun. Obviously, you shot way more things than I have, so I am very curious to know, you know what you haven't shot that what, you want to. One I'd love to shoot. Don't know if we'll ever get a chance to is HKG11, the caseless gun. You know, it was another hyper burst gun. You remember? You know, when burst, it fired an extremely high cyclic rate of fire. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Because process. it could, because of the, the yeah. lack of case. And it cycled it very quickly. Do you think that some version of hyperburst is the future of assault rifles? I'd like to think so, but I think more than anything, the complexity that is required to bring that to fruition for the average soldier is not maintainable or sustainable. I mean, let's face it, Joe Average you know, I mean, that's this is what they need. Now you give them a hyperburst gun and expect them to keep that running. It's one of those things. I think the concept has merit, but it's it's something that we'll probably never see it in execution Got because it. of the realities of who who the weapon's being issued yeah. to. Well, thanks, bro. I appreciate you making the trip out here to. Yeah, it's always a good time to come out nice, and shoot. The Carolinas here, 
This particular range is the first for us to film here. Take aim range in Pageland, South Carolina. So you're here. Yeah, it's very nice. For our first uh, filming session. Awesome. We got more coming your way with Tyler. Uh, we're gonna be shaking out some other guns that you definitely are gonna find interesting. Stay tuned. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.